Hello and good afternoon from London. This is Dermot Hudson, Chairman of Duce Idea Study Group of England, Official Delegate of the Korean French Association for the UK, and the President of the Association of the Study of Song and Politics UK. I'm going to say a few short words today about the subject of human rights in the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, a subject uh, that uh, you see a lot about in the media and is basically used as a weapon by the imperialists and their lackeys to demonise and vilify the DPRK and to distort the reality of life in the DPRK. Now, I'm doing this because uh, last week the UK mission to the UN uh, decided to issue a statement on human rights in the DPRK, making a, a number of allegations. Of course, uh, these kind of allegations are not new. They've been uh, ongoing for several years, uh, but, uh, you know, the UK FCO overpaid bureaucrats decided, uh, you know, they, they'd issue a, a statement about human rights in, in DPRK just, just to interfere. Now, uh, really, uh, they used to say charity begins at home, and indeed I think human rights should begin at home, and the UK really needs to put its house in order before it starts trying to issue statements about other countries' human rights performance or give them advice uh, in what they should or shouldn't uh, do. Because the UK is a country where the numbers of homeless are rising each day. And housing should be a basic human right, a basic social need. But all the time, we've got more homeless people here in the UK. You know, I was down in Catford uh, yesterday uh, doing some shopping, saw several people begging, several homeless people. And you can go to people's career, and I've been there 17 times, never seen anyone begging or homeless, not even in the years of the arduous march in uh, 1996. Uh, in the DPRK, housing is virtually free of charge. In the rural areas, farmers are given houses free of charge. And in the cities, uh, it's a sort of normal uh, rent for housing. And, you know, people got splendid houses of about 150, sorry, flats and apartments of 150 square metres with all mod cons in them. And, you know, this is something that we, we can only dream of in a capitalist country like uh, Britain, where uh, rents are incredibly high. You know, you're, talk, you're e talking about easily uh, £1,000 uh, uh, month uh, rent in cities like London for a very tiny property, may, maybe just, just one room, and to buy a flat in the central London, it's about a million pounds. And even if you own your own flat, you're likely to get ripped off by uh, property management companies for service charges, etc. Anyway, uh, getting back onto the point, the, uh, in people's career, human rights are real, they guaranteed, uh, and these include you know, the right to housing, as I've just said, the right to work, the right to a job, you know, according to your qualifications and abilities, the right to education, right up to university level, no tuition fees in the DPRK, no student loans. Uh, you know, people can go to university. There is no class barrier to education in the DPRK. You've got the right to free healthcare and uh, 
you've also also got like old age pensions and uh, diff different uh, social benefits there. People do not pay any taxation. And the DPRK is an elected government. Uh, you can't have the Prime Minister there shutting down Parliament or anything or anything like that or a, a, con a court actually overruling Parliament to any of these kind of things. In the DPRK, virt um, virtually 100% of electors vote in the election and uh, elect uh, candidates and you've actually got ordinary workers uh, like like a street cleaner have actually sit in the supreme people's assembly now that would be that would be unthinkable in a capitalist society like britain where only uh the elite and the middle class can get elected to, to parliament uh so you know the dprk is a real people's democracy it's guaranteeing human rights uh complete completely and as i say visiting the dprk many times over 17 years i've never seen any of the uh, these so-called concentration camps or prison camps they keep talking about you know some people might say oh well they don't show you everything or they're hidden away somewhere but uh, if you look at some of the claims uh, you know, th these camps would be huge places that would not be easy to hide away. And, you know, if you did have uh, repression on that level, you would see police snatch squads, etc. sort of on the streets rounding up dissidents, which, again, I've never see seen anything uh, like that. Uh, and you know, I've been uh, uh, near to the uh, Mansa Day Assembly Hall, which is the DPRK's, uh, uh, the, which houses the DPRK Supreme People's Assembly. And they didn't have armed guards there. I mean, they, they obviously had some security, but nothing like the House of Commons in, in London. And uh, I've never heard of the police in the DPRK shoot anyone but you know in the US I think many black people fell victims to the police and in London the uh, Brazilian electrician Jean Charles de Menzies was shot dead by the police in 2005 uh, so it's capitalist countries like the US, UK, France, and so on, that really need to look at their human rights record, not criticise others. So, you know, what of the anti-DPRK, anti-socialist, anti-Juche human rights offensive? What really uh, is behind it? Well, I've actually, uh, it might surprise people, you know, I've actually glanced at the so-called UN Commission of Inquiry report on the DPRK, which is full of rubbish. Uh, they didn't actually interview anyone in the DPRK, but as usual, uh, relied on defectors who just come out with all sorts of rubbish. Uh, as a legal document, it's uh, pure nonsense it wouldn't actually stand up in a court of law but hidden uh, in it or perhaps perhaps not really hidden is is basically a regime change uh, agenda the dprk is actually condemned uh, for being uh, a socialist country because the the authors of this document believe in the neoliberal model and anything uh, that uh, goes against that is uh, regarded as as being being beyond the pale being a human rights violator so it is basically an attack on the dprk for being a socialist country a regime change document and of course in the past you know for those of you 
who are old enough to remember, like myself, uh, the imperialists use human rights as a weapon against the, the former Soviet Union and the other socialist countries. And you had the so-called Helsinki Accord or Helsinki Mechanism, which was really set up to destroy the socialist countries in Eastern Europe and the, and the Soviet Union. And, you know, it's the same thing today with the so-called UN Commission of Inquiry uh, and all the other human, so-called human rights propaganda against the DPRK. Anyway, um, you know, please subscribe to our channel, share our videos, and more importantly, come to our meetings and events. So we'll be having a, another meeting probably on the 2nd of November. Thank you very much. Goodbye.